ready to have more fun with trigonometry? Let's keep it going. Okay. okay. So Katoa, reference angles, coterminal, all these things should make a lot of sense. Quadrants, one, two, three, and four. Uh, reference angles, did we mention that already? Uh, you may let's add to let's, it. Let's add to it. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make you uh, folks at home do some work. I'm going to give you some clues, and I want you to use those clues to find what I'm asking for. So, for example, I'm going to tell you that there is some angle in some quadrant whose cosine is 4 over 5. So in other words, remember, cosine tells me the ratio between the side that's adjacent over the side that is the hypotenuse, or x over the hypotenuse. Okay? I'm also going to tell you that the same theta, its sign is less than zero. And I want you to find the tangent of that same angle. I'm just going to give you one hint, and that hint is going to be draw a picture. So pause your cameras, or not your cameras, your viewing <laughs> instruments, and work on this. Don't cheat. Don't wait for Mr. Paley and me to do it. Try it at home. Tell me what the tangent of this angle is. All right, did you get it? What's the answer? All right, let's see how you did. So, Mr. Paley? So, yeah, draw the picture a... is worth a thousand words. That's draw a saying. triangle. Whose adjacent side is four and whose hypotenuse is five. Draw it in. Oh, sine of theta is zero less than. Yeah. Uh, make, can we just draw it in quadrant one first and then? Well, we sure could because I know that four fifths cosine is positive and my x is so my x has to be positive. So I know it either has to be in quadrant, quadrant one. one or quadrant four oh. because my four is positive. Right. 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 Where cosine is positive in quadrant cosine one and four. Cosine is positive in one and four. But sine is negative, so sine is associated with my y variable. Oh, quadrant four then. So quadrant three would work, or quadrant four. So I think it has to be quadrant four, right? Okay. So I'm just going to slap a picture down of a nice reference triangle, right? And I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this all the time. Remember, reference triangles are always in relationship to your x-axis. They never go over to your y-axis. Always the x, because that's what you're comparing it to. That's where you started your rotation. Okay. There's your reference angle. If my cosine is 4 fifths, where should I put the 4 there? On the x-axis. On the x, and it's <clears throat> positive, because it's going over. And then I have hypotenuse is 5. Hypotenuse is 5. And I'm going to use my handy-dandy little... Uh, Pythagorean theorem, as they say in England. <laughs> Pythagorean theorem, or just... Know your Pythagorean triples. Know my Pythagorean triple. This looks like... A 3, 4, a five. Three, four 5. Now, you might just put a 3 there, but what do you have to be careful about there, Mr. Bailey? The sign of it. Yeah, and it's going... Sign with a G. Yeah, positive negatives. Yeah, it's going down, so you know that has to... From your picture, you know that has to be a negative. And now you want the tangent of that same angle. Same, yeah. Which is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. Yeah. Negative 3 fourths. There you go. And it doesn't really matter where I put that negative, as long as I put it somewhere. Yep. That wasn't that bad. No. Okay. Draw a picture, draw a picture, draw a picture. Let's give them another one. Hone in on your clues, figure out what right. quadrant it's in, and then it's nice and easy. Hey, what if I asked you to find... Um, the sign of this. Could you do that? Well, well, you sure, already have you already the picture. Have picture. Sign would be opposite over hypotenuse, so your y over your hypotenuse, negative three fifths. Yeah. Put out. Boom. All right, let's try another one. Yeah. And then there are a whole bunch of these for homework. Do you want to give me one, Mr. Paley? Sure. All um, right. What if we knew that the tangent of theta was negative what, 5 twelfths? Mm, nice, nice That's one. going to be okay. Yeah. And cosine is less than zero. Okay. Find, can we do cosecant? 
Oh, we haven't. We oh, don't know okay. about the There's secret. crazy. Yeah. There's other crazy. All right, we'll get there though. I'm glad you. I right, have a fine sign of the angle. Okay. Sign of that angle. Okay, try that at home. And here we are. <laughs> let's draw a picture. Tan is negative. Let's see. That's y over x. So it's negative where I have one negative and mm. one positive. So I'm thinking second quadrant or fourth quadrant. Right. Cosine is negative. Cosine is x. We have so to be in quadrant two. Second or third, so it's got to be quadrant two. All right, so I'm going to draw my nice little picture. We'll just draw any old triangle in any there. Any old triangle, always down or up down, to the right x axis. Fill in your sides, tan. There's my little reference angle. So opposite. Oh, now this is interesting. Because of that negative. Because of that negative. Am I going to put the negative with that 5? No, because that's up 5. Because that's up 5. Where does the <clears throat> negative have to go? On the x. On the x, because it's to the left. That's why I just trust your picture. There's no memorizing. It's just using your picture. Right. Hey, Pythagorean theorem. Or Pythagorean triple. This is the famous 5, 12, 13 triple. Okay, but if you didn't know that, you could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now I can find the sine of theta easily. Sine is opposite, or the y over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 5 13. And that's what everybody at home got? I certainly hope so. Now, Mr. Paley, you mentioned cosecant. So let's talk about that. We have talked about three trig functions so far, sine, cosine, tangent, but there are three more. There's actually more than that. There are many more than that, but, but there are three more that we're going to talk about. Sounds good. And they are sometimes called the reciprocal. I always, I always think of handstands when I think of the word reciprocal. I know, reciprocal. and you know, I do too. And you even can do a good handstand. Which I'm not going to do right which now. Which you're not going to do. But I always talk about you when I'm teaching this because I say, Mr. Paley, if he were here, could do Would do a handstand. A handstand. And they're called reciprocal trig functions because, strangely enough, they are the reciprocals of our... So, um, let's take the reciprocal of sine. Reciprocal is 1 over... Sign. That would be the reciprocal of the sine. And believe it or not, the reciprocal of the sine has its own special name. And it is called, well, I'll give you the abbreviation. CSC. CSC, and that is the co secant. secant. That's the reciprocal of sine. Now, you can think of it as the reciprocal of sine, or if you want, you can think about, well, if sine is y over your hypotenuse, or y over r, then cosecant is going to have to be your Flip hypotenuse, or your rotating arm, over y. Now, reciprocals just flip things over. So, wherever sine's positive, cosecant is going to be positive. Right. right? Flipping something doesn't change its sign. Doesn't change its sign with positive, g. Positive, negative. Wherever sine is negative, cosecant is going to be negative. Okay, well, cosine doesn't want to be left out. The reciprocal of cosine has its own special thing. It's called the secant, abbreviated S-E-C. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Secant, cosecant. I know, right? That's because they are co-functions. We'll get to that a little later. Cosine, as we know by now, is x over your rotating arm or your hypotenuse. So we can think of secant as your rotating arm or your hypotenuse over x. Wherever cosine's positive, secant's positive. Wherever cosine's negative, secant is negative. And last but not least, tangent. The reciprocal of tangent is, this one actually makes sense. <laughs> Cotangent. 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 And tangent is y over x 
opposite over adjacent, so the reciprocal is going to be adjacent for x over y. That's almost something you need to memorize. That is something you have to memorize. Right. Going Just back to my high school days, C went with S, S went with C. The tangent one went with the tangent one. Yeah, a lot, the, I think a <laughs> lot of people make the mistake of like cosecant goes with cosine. Yes. They're both cos, but the cos don't go together. They don't go together. So you, you just have to somehow think about it, make sense of it for yourself, some mnemonic device. Yeah. This is really the first time this year when, there, when I'm asking you guys out there to memorize things, yep. really, right? And again, these you have to memorize because they are definitions of things. You're not memorizing concepts. These are just, just terms, words. vocabulary, definitions that you have to know yep. and memorize. So now these can get thrown into our clues that we were just doing. So let's do, All right, so let's I do have one. one last. Okay, good. Lay it on me. All right, it's going to be a little weirder than the other ones. Oh, good. I think. So what if we knew secant of an angle? Let's use a different Greek. Secant, secant let's of say beta. 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 Greek beta. Oh, that's good. It doesn't matter what we use. It's going to be an angle. Right. right. Secant of beta equaled one half. Okay. Mm. And cotangent was greater than zero. Find cosecant oh, of nice. that angle. Oh, so we'll kind of mix up in a whole bunch of craziness here. Nice. Okay, this is great. Now that looks intimidating. It really does. But it's not so bad. Yeah. I mean, this is impressive. Somebody's watching behind you right now. They're going to look at this and say, wow. We're learning some big time We're stuff. Some big time stuff. Okay, secant is cosine. Reciprocal of cosine. So whatever cosine's doing, secant's kind of doing it. Right. So cosine is positive when x is positive. So quadrant one or four. That's going to be one or four for that. This clue tells me cotan is positive, which Greater is than the zero, same right. when tan is positive. Tan is positive in the first quadrant or the third. third quadrant. All right, so we've honed this into the first quadrant, which is nice. Yep. You like the first quadrant? I'll draw a reference triangle, Boom. or in this case, the triangle. Here's my little beta. OK, so here I go. So secant. Can secant come out one half? Maybe I'll give you a problem that doesn't work. Um. Oh, you're right. It should be two. Two over one. Yeah, Sorry. That's, right. that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. But since it's still positive. It's still positive. It's fine. I should have. Uh, you're right. And this is good. You guys, when you pause, think about why secant could not have been one half. Right. All right. So here we go. So that's going to be our hypotenuse over our x. So two over our one. Right. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so here we have hypotenuse over adjacent. And that's a nice way to think about it with your picture. Cosine <clears throat> is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is hypotenuse over adjacent. And I bet you are now figuring out why it couldn't have been one half out there. Okay, so let's see. Um, Looking for cosecant. Cosecant, so that's sine, so I do need this y value here. Flip sine, right? It's the okay. reciprocal of sine. Reciprocal of sine. So I need to find that y, that y, that <laughs> y, <laughs> to find the sine, which will help me find the cosecant. Okay, so now, this actually is one of our triples that we are comfortable with, but if you don't remember, yeah, you could do a the... squared plus b squared equals c squared, but that's going to end up being. Square root of three. Square root of three. Seen that? I always like to check. I'm going to the right. That's positive. I'm going up. That's positive. Boom. I'm good with my positives and negatives. All right. I'm ready to go. Cosecant reciprocal of sine. Sine would be square root of three over two. So cosecant would be flip that two over the square root of three. Now, unfortunately, in algebra, we still consider it to be bad form to leave irrational numbers in the denominator. It's not so much when you get into more advanced mathematics. But that's not that bad. We know how to rationalize the denominator. Ah, 
You multiply by? The fancy form of one. Square root of three over the square root of three? Yeah, that will take care of that irrational number. So that would give me two square root of three over the square root of nine, which is three. So that would be kind of your final uh, answer there for the cosecant of beta. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Paley. You're welcome. Have fun with that. Thank you.